Hi guys, welcome back to Dr. Sam in the City. Today I wanted to talk about spironolactone. And this is not the first time I've mentioned this medication. I think I spoke to you last week um, when I was discussing Acne Awareness Month and making sure that before you've given up on treating your acne that you have in fact exhausted all avenues for treatment. Now, spironolactone has been in the press in the last week. Um, I saw a piece about it in Allure. It was mentioned for the second time in the last six months in the Huffington Post because of a recent study that was published in one of the esteemed dermatology journals that showed that it was almost as effective as antibiotics at treating acne. Now, I actually think it probably deserves a better rep even than that. And I think it's probably a more sensible option for those who have more active acne that needs longer term management than in fact oral antibiotics. Because it is a medication that is used off label, I must mention for acne, um, in adult women. Um, can also be used in teens, but it's predominantly used in adult women. Um, to manage acne that is often seen in the U part of the face, so lower cheeks, jawline, chin, that kind of throbbing, nodular, cystic acne that lingers and causes dents and pigmentation and just blooming misery. Um, and it's often seen as a um, next level treatment if you failed on what's considered conventional first line treatment, which is typically something like a course of oral antibiotics in combination with topical treatment. Now, I have to say the way I use spironolactone has changed over the last few years as I've gotten more and more comfortable prescribing it and seeing the tremendous results it brings, sometimes for the first time, even in patients who have had Rakutane and perhaps not done as well as they'd hoped to in terms of getting a longevity of results um, from their course of Rakutane. So I see it as being particularly helpful in those where I've seen them for the first time and I've prescribed topicals, I've sorted out their skincare and their makeup practices and perhaps I've used oral antibiotics as a holding measure. I think of them as like stabilizers on a bicycle before you can learn to ride. And then the plan is always to take them off at three or six months later and see what we're left with. Now, oftentimes, a good topical regime that is sufficiently punchy and strong will do most of the hard work for you and it means that oral treatment can stop. Um, but there is another group who are perhaps particularly oily um, and their acne still persists at a significant enough level or maybe has sort of peaks and troughs that are still quite unsettling and um, causing instability mentally and physically um, because of their impact on someone's quality of life and the quality of their skin. So that's why I think spironolactone oftentimes much better because you can stay on it long term without the same safety concerns. Obviously antibiotics, the WHO would rather we didn't use them for longer than six months and perhaps we shouldn't even be using them as often as we are or for as long as that. So I always think of them as a holding measure but if that um, doesn't work and topicals alone aren't doing the trick um, and in particular, if someone has had a history of being on Rakutane in the past and it hasn't worked um, miracles for them. When I say miracles, I mean significantly lowered the tempo of their acne in a persistent and sustainable way. Um, if it comes grumbling back within six months, I think spironolactone is often a really excellent treatment to consider. As I say, I mentioned it's used off-label and prescribed only by dermatologists in the UK. Um, so, as I say, it's a diuretic, which means that it's designed to lower the fluid load and it's used usually in an older population um, who need um, management of conditions affecting their heart where excess fluid in the body causes problems. In young fit women, however, it doesn't tend to interfere with fluid balance because there is no excess, the heart's usually not working normally. Um, so it's a medication which, generally speaking, is actually really quite well tolerated. In particular, women who've done very well on pills like Yasmin or Dianet, where they have what's called an anti-androgen effect, which means that they block the effect of male hormones. So those are the kind of hormones that typically give us spots before a period. Um, so if they've had a good response on those particular contraceptive pills, but perhaps, again, the GP's going, mm, you know, you're in your 30s now, 
not sure I'm happy with continuing on this, having perhaps been on it for many years before. Um, Spironolactone can then also be a great option um, because it has a similar sort of benefit. It has a dose that you can titrate from being quite low and modest up to a reasonably decent dose um, according to severity. So again, it's a drug that we can fine tune according to the individual and I'm all about creating tailored treatments on an individual basis. So what can you expect when you start spironolactone? So the first thing to know about it is it's a slow burn, so it doesn't act overnight. What typically happens is at about the six week mark, you'll start to notice that you are significantly less oily, which is a kind of a really reassuring thing, I think, for most people to see happening. I usually see patients back for the first time at three months because that's a good time frame to start to see whether or not it's really going to help. And of course, I naturally combine that with a topical program with a retinoid, plus or minus an anti-inflammatory like benzoyl peroxide. If they've been on oral antibiotics and had already been on a topical program with the oral antibiotics, and I was thinking about spironolactone, I would often continue them before switching um, them off and continuing just on spironolactone because of that time lag. The same would be true if someone was trying to come off the contraceptive pill um, and hadn't responded to topicals. Again, I might try and make sure there was a transition period to avoid suddenly going cold turkey and then waiting for the spiro to slowly do its thing. Um, and then I'll titrate the dose up accordingly until we get control. And then naturally, once stability has been found, you know, you always try to get people in the lowest dose of any oral medication possible. So that's kind of the process. And as I say, it's not a quick fix. Things happen in sort of chunks of three months, but that's pretty much true of most effective acne treatments. So when someone's on treatment, I check their blood tests to keep an eye on their, um, their salt levels because the one thing is as a diuretic medication can influence is the level of sodium and potassium. Um, so it can push your potassium up, so I always encourage patients to avoid excess of bananas and coconut waters or any other form of salt supplements. Um, other common side effects include things like period um, uh, irregularities, so that's very common. Um, uh, breast tenderness is quite common, people can pee a little bit more often, it's always worth taking it in the morning rather than before bedtime. Um, and we ask patients not to fall pregnant because it would have a feminizing effect on a male fetus. Um, and we, we're using it off-label, so because of a black box warning in the US where there were some concerns about um, one animal study and benign breast growth, we avoid um, its use in patients with a strong family history of breast cancer. However, what studies show us are that there are no major concerns on that front, um, but it's something to simply be aware of. So, final thoughts on spironolactone. Um, I have very happy patients on this medication, and because they can be well maintained, for the longer term, um, unlike, as I said, the sort of safety concerns from a global health perspective without oral antibiotics, I would go further even from my personal experience and say that I, I find it to be a particularly helpful medication in those who are suitable. So I think for those women who are struggling with that often difficult to treat pattern of hormonal acne, it's stubborn, persistent, making you miserable, it's certainly something to discuss with your dermatologist. I hope that was helpful. Bye for now.